going on everybody, welcome back to the Civilization 5 60 Civ World Battle, it is turn 278, doesn't feel right still, we're going to probably get to 300-ish today, which is quite exciting, we'll see, I, I don't know exactly how many we, we got through last time, so I think it was about 30 something, so probably similar to that again, there we go, we've still got some ideologies coming through, um, the Aztecs going autocracy, and Russia, that's making a bit of a comeback, I mean they're all struggling for some reason, but I guess it depends, you know, wait, it depends what civs are around you as well, and I can't keep track of that. That's way too difficult. There's so many. Um, Russia has completed the Apollo program. I think they're only the third civ, so that's that's pretty interesting to note. You know, they're still doing well for technology, but none of it matters because they're still failing here. Still just not doing well at all at conquering this city. Complete disaster. Uh, what else we got going on? Civs starting to get... A lot more civs starting to have planes, and I mean mobile SAMs as well, pretty common. France with some planes, fighters and carriers, Poland now has a couple of planes. The Huns have some, obviously oil is an important resource, we can see it, most of it. I don't I don't think it's showing me all of it, like I don't see the Huns that actually have any oil, oh there's some. Maybe, maybe they, there is a lot of civs, like they're all a lot smaller than we're used to on these maps, so maybe they're just going to have less, that makes sense right, it's more divided up. Usually, obviously, we'd just have like five or six giant sieves at this point. And in this this game, there's no one I'd say is truly huge. There's some big ones, right? Brazil is big. Um, France is big. China, uh, China, Shoshone is big. I mean, this China is really big now, but I don't think the city quality quite backs it up. But maybe over time, they'll get there. I see they have uranium as well. That is obviously an important resource now going forward as well. And they have some planes, so they're starting to make improvements. They have infantry, so Mao starting to climb the rankings maybe which is great for me because obviously he was my pick so if he can do well then there we go that's that's all that matters to me to be honest I, I don't need anything else to happen but that's that's great what else we got we've got this city's now starting to be sieged out as well um, and I think China's helping I can't tell but I think China will be helping so it's a bit of a race but if Mao can get hold of this he will be he'll be very happy Korea with a land ship. Where did it go? That moved so far. I guess there is a railroad and a road. <laughs> just moved like all the way down here. That's pretty um, pretty useful if they ever like, have to defend themselves. The ability to just you know move the whole way up in one go. Okay, so yeah, we can't really see all the oil. I mean, I know that or maybe that maybe it did show before, but now obviously there's an oil rig here. So that's obviously something else we have to look out for when we're trying to assess if someone has oil or not. We've got to look for oil rigs. I think that might be the first one I've seen. Oh my goodness, California. Eight planes. It's quite a lot. And another six down here. I think they're starting to really emerge. I, I don't know what it is. I think the Shoshone are limited on population growth. Just because of the tundra being quite close together as well. Whereas California is kind of... Not unlimited, but these sea tiles provide good amounts of food. The ocean gives two food. So these cities are all getting to nice good sizes. And they're yeah, they're doing okay. Uh, Benin has completed the Manhattan Project. And the city of Grand River is being bombed to the ground by the Shoshone, but the, they can't get to it, so that doesn't really matter too much. Nigeria, Czechia, China, lots of civs going. Okay, I had a little Google, because we've had some more comments weighing in on the great debate of the pronunciation. There is... Google gave me three. It gave me a British one, which is, I think it was Khmer. There was an American one, which was kind of a hybrid of the two, and I can't really remember. I didn't, it was like Khmer or something. It was even weirder. And then there's like the official one, which I'm guessing is like how it was pronounced at the time, or locally, which was Kai Mai or Khmer, something like that, right? And, um, but either way, they're about to be eliminated. So there we go. We'll settle on the debate. I think I had three different suggestions of how to say it. And it looks like maybe you were all right in your own way, right? Like there's a British one, there's an American one, and there's the official one as well. So at that point, like whatever, we'll, <laughs> we'll go with whatever. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I think, I don't know, Khmer is the easiest to say, but it is probably wrong. So, I, well, not wrong. It's just like British, you know, they probably just gave it that name. So it's probably not right. So there you go. I, I don't know. Well, we'll just leave it. They're probably going to die this turn anyway, so we'll just move on.
and call them Indonesian islands conquered by Japan, because that would just be a whole lot easier for everyone at that point. Here we go, are they going to do it or not? Come on, Japan. You're sort of letting us all down here, what's going on? What is... what's happening? It's because the Shoshone are taking forever all of a sudden. What's going on here? It's because I think they're trying to, they're probably trying to negotiate a deal to get through open borders somewhere and it's just not working out for them. But they are doing a lot of damage, despite being very far away. Corral v Brazil is also going on, another pretty big war in the grand scheme of things. And so far Brazil have not made too much progress. But actually they lack artillery units, I don't see any. Any type of art, they have one uh, rocket artillery, that is, or a couple down here sorry, that are really far away. Not really of use, so that's a bit of a strange choice. Um, they do have some planes and stuff that is slowly coming around. They do have open borders now with the Inca as well. But yeah, not really... You know, I thought they'd be doing better than this. But it is a difficult city to get to. The mountain, the coast, all these rivers as well. It is a bit of a nightmare, so... Wouldn't surprise me if they fail. Who keeps proposing this? Every time, more minutes... I'm guessing one sieve just gets to pick every time. Like, is Spain just picking every time? Mormonism was again not passed... And freedom also did not pass. I don't even that's not even the most popular ideology. So and the votes, obviously, they've all got like three or four votes. Some will have more because of the there's a wonder that gives you some more and some other reasons. But yeah, for the most part they all have like three or four votes. There's no city states to get, gain any extra votes. So it's just really weird. Has Texas always had this? I felt like maybe they did. I mean the Mayans obviously cut off. I mean, look at this island by the way, Cuba. If someone was to grab this. That'd be really good. I mean, 24 population is not bad at all. There's plenty of units here to defend it, but still. I mean, the Mayans and Palenque here is at 23. Even the Aztecs, they're not doing, like, too bad. If one of them was to conquer the other, and obviously the Mayans look more likely. They have more cities. They're a bit bigger. They've got better technology. If the Mayans conquered the Aztecs, all of a sudden they wouldn't be looking too bad. I'm sure California is obviously also considering the advantages they have over the Aztecs and probably the Mayans as well. The Mayans, of course, do have... The Panama Canal, but with the Corral's borders, it isn't super useful. I mean, you'd have to conquer... I mean, if you got this city back off Texas somehow, then it's a bit e more useful. You can obviously swing around into the Pacific or the Atlantic, have a bit more of a good time. What are you doing, US? You're just not doing much. Just <laughs> they're not dead. They're, they're, they're surviving. Spain obviously met that fate. Swedish, I don't even know what to call this area. It's a mixed area, isn't it? Parts of Spain and Morocco. Um, Swedish colonial territory? I have no idea at this point. I mean, whatever we call it. But Sweden, obviously, has it. I mean, it counts, right? They have a couple of good cities here. I'm sure they're getting some science from it. Some, I mean, the production doesn't matter too much, right? Because these cities are on their own. But science, culture... That sort of stuff. I mean, they must be getting a little bit of help. It means they are a little bit... And obviously at home, they're super strong as well. They're not a weak... There are no pushovers up here either. And there we go. China did sneak it. Oh, wait. No, that confused me. No. Tang is this China. So, yeah. Mao's China. Does conquer New Sarai. So, Mongolia is now down to one city in the far west. And, yeah. This China... I mean, I said Mongolia were not, like, too bad. They were big. They just weren't doing too well. So... To add that to this China is going to make them a lot stronger. That's for sure. Um, and we'll see how Korea responds to that. Because this could be seen as a bit of a challenge. India does peace out with the original China. India is still disappointing. They, they, they have so much potential right now. And they're just sort of sitting back. I mean, obviously they have big tech advantages for them. I mean, I say that. The Harappa looks like they're doing okay. I see a battleship there. Some planes. But yeah, India has, you know, must have the numbers advantage and stuff like that. Korea has just entered the information era. Quite a bit behind the Huns. They were a few turns ago, so that's a little scary. Maybe Korea is falling off a little bit somehow. Oh, okay, that is that is scary. Five atomic bombs. There we go. So somebody has them. It took a while, but we found some. Um, Korea with five. And they've just entered. I don't know if anyone else has any. I don't know if Attila has. No, he only had two planes. I don't know if someone else has got any. Um, I'm, okay, France has one. They also have some spaceship parts. I, did I just see that right? Yes, they have spaceship parts. These civs are not allowing their units to keep up with the technologies that they're on, which doesn't help when I'm trying to guess what technologies they're on at all. 
But there we go. France has spaceship parts. That's that's what we need to know. <laughs> Texas, you got any nukes? I think they're gonna make. I think they're gonna improve. I don't think they're there yet, but I think they will be climbing the rankings since they took out New York and Washington. Big additions. Whereas sieves like the Shoshone aren't really growing. Stuff like that. Sandy had nine planes now. Uh, what was I was gonna look at saying? Japan did just conquer the unnamed sieve. <laughs> There we go. So they're eliminated. Japan gets a pretty good island in New Guinea. So them and Korea now with islands down here. I mean, imagine what Indonesia could have done if they just settled all of this. I don't know why they didn't do anything. It doesn't really make sense. They've still not even upgraded some of those. This settler is still here. I mean, there's nowhere for it to go now. But yeah, they just did nothing. I mean, it was, I don't know, it's a bit broken. It doesn't always happen. So I, I don't know what, hap what went wrong this time. Um, it's a bit of a shame. But yeah, it doesn't always happen. Like, sometimes they will try and do stuff, even when I didn't give them the ability to go in the water. And this time they had the ability to go in the water, and they didn't use it. So I don't know what went on there. But it doesn't matter. I mean, if someone conquers Jakarta, that will be a sensational little addition to someone's empire. It's currently at 38 population, um, which is great. Obviously, they've never had to build settlers, which slow the growth. They've got all these ocean tiles, which do give two food, I think. Um, here we go, though. China has pieced out the Iroquois. That is original China. Zulu and Iroquois and Poland and Iroquois. None of those are too big. I mean, the Iroquois are down to two cities right now. They do have some planes. We'll see. I think Texas may be about to join in, though. So, like, all the damage the Shoshone's doing. And then with Texas as well. I think that will probably see them eliminated. But if Texas could grab these two cities as well, they're going to be looking great. I really think they are going to be sort of late game charging in towards maybe even first place. I mean, that's up to you guys at the end of the day, but... Obviously, they could, you know, I guess that it is kind of in the sieve's hands, you know, especially if they get top four in score, then, well, no, top three in score, like, guarantees you a top four position, if that makes any sense at all. Um, so we'll see how that works out. What else have we got going on? We've got the Corral completing the Manhattan Project as well. Probably could scare Brazil off a little bit, but yeah, I mean, so far no damage has been done, and America has been eliminated as Chicago does fall to Texas, so they get a little bit more of the Caribbean islands for themselves. Fair enough, fairly useful. Poland, Lithuania has denounced the Iroquois, Burma has denounced China. There we go, and we're through. Burma's turn is no longer as buggy as it used to be, so maybe it was somebody else, and we're just blaming them. <laughs> All along. Arabia now has... Look how good... Arabia, surely you must think we could conquer Phoenicia here. Like, surely, what is going on? Why are you not doing this? Look at the Sumer as well. They suck. Come on. Even Persia's doing okay. Didn't Persia... What did Persia do? I'm getting confused. Whose city was it? Oh, this belonged to the Sumer, didn't they? I thought we would have got more out of Persia. I mean, they have four good-sized cities still. And it's just nothing. The Harappa... It's so peaceful. I don't know. Phoenicia's not... It doesn't look great. I mean... I'm so surprised. Egypt's been very peaceful as well. It's so weird. I don't know what the Songhai are up to here. Europe has actually been really quiet. There's nothing really since Spain fell. Like the Papal States haven't really had a mention at all. Middle East too. It's been very quiet. North America has been providing a lot of the action as well as Asia. And as we see, Mongolia. Okay, well this they're safe from this. Poland can't get over here and neither can original China. But if Mao decides to come over... Like I said, they're very spread thin on units. They do have to be careful. Korea could come for another another attempt. But for now, at least, he seems okay. I wonder if he's overtaken the Shoshone. He does look bigger. That They look bigger as a country on the mini-map. Maybe. I mean, they look similar. The Shoshone is actually really big. But then, obviously, the Shoshone has, like, northern Japan and all the Pacific. So they're probably still going to be in first. But they do look like they're improving. We can have a look at the demographics. Uh... When it decides to load. If ever. There we go. So France and the Shoshone now dominating these statistics. They've pulled ahead a little bit. France now has the most population. 40 million. Shoshone with the biggest crop yield. France then leads production. Shoshone has the best economy. Land goes to the Shoshone. Soldiers is led by France. They have doubled it since the, the, the what the number one number is. It was, it was something like 400k at the start of the last episode. And now it's 800k. And Brazil is still leading the way in literacy. So that's nice to see. Obviously they... Like I, I'm not... I can't exactly see why. But I'm guessing maybe the Amazon rainforest is helping. I mean they're getting two science from me. All the tiles that are still left over. So that might help. Um, 
could be helping them. Alright, what is next to happen? What is next? Brazil is starting to surround this city, but again, there's just... Like an anti-tank gun? Machine gun? That's, that's not convincing. I, I, don't, I don't think they can do this. This is terrible, though. I, I don't know how Russia's not got this. What? It must be by choice, right? There's no way... There's no way Czechia is keeping them at bay, so I don't really know what's going on. It doesn't really make sense, but... <laughs> it, yeah, it must it must be by choice. Like, Russia must just be choosing not to conquer this city. I mean, I know it takes a few turns to move through the woods, but you don't have to send two in at once. They can only hit one. Like, they can't hit both. It makes no sense to me, but... Whatever. I mean... <laughs> you do you. Indonesia has entered the modern era at the same time as Mongolia. Obviously, both of them now won. It's funny, Indonesia is now way better off than uh, Mongolia with what, just one city left. Poor old Mongolia is just still stuck here. Not going too well. I felt like this region is primed for some interesting wars because you have so many powerful civs. The Muri, who have an atomic bomb as well, I think they... They're one of those sieves. They may not be on any of those demographic lists, but I can't imagine they're too far off. You know, they're probably third or fourth in almost all of them sort of scenario. So they're certainly going to be a contender still. They've been they're sort of like the quiet, quiet sieve. I sort of ignore them a little bit in the corner, but they are there. But yeah, this East Asian Pacific region, you've got so many sieves that could be interesting. Like you've got the Muri, Japan is obviously playing a bit of a role now. They actually have their Yamo Yamatos. Can't remember if they're battleship replacements. I'm thinking they are. I can never quite remember. But yeah, they have those. So you've got Korea. There's also just interesting, like, elements. So Indonesia is obviously not a strong sieve. But if someone was to conquer Jakarta, that would be really interesting. You've got India, who should be doing better. Burma, I mean, they're no pushover. As much as I'm <laughs> egging on India to attack them, Burma's doing... They're well set up to defend themselves. Uh, you've got the rising... Mao's communist China, what could they get up to? Again, I mean, sort of similar to Indonesia, this China. Would it go to Korea? Would it go to Mao? You know, would it go to either of them? I, d I don't know. Shoshone are obviously playing some role here as well. California seems to be very much on the rise. Hawaii? Ha Hawaii? Well, yeah, Hawaii, but Polynesia's got a role to play as well, right in the middle. And then you've obviously got how are the Aztecs going to fare? How are the Mayans going to fare? The Incans look pretty strong in this um, region as well. They're essentially a Pacific country as well. They're not that far from the Muri. We've seen them fight before. I mean, even Brazil can come around here if they want to. They, they, they have got these tiles at the bottom that allow them to sneak outwards. So yeah, that is a very interesting region of the map. I think we're going to see more action from there at some point. Persia completing the Manhattan Project. Good. I mean, that makes them a lot better than I thought they were. So yeah, that's an interesting one for this region. And Mongolia has gone with freedom. Again, one of the last sieves to do that. Obviously, it's quite difficult. I mean, it must be hard to get. I don't know how they even get there. Because, you know, they can't build three factories when they only have one city. So I think the requirements do change a little bit. In that scenario. Uh, the Mayans have denounced China. Okay. Another ideology adopted. Which one is this? Indonesia has gone for the freedom ideology. Interesting choices. Freedom seems to be making a comeback, right? It was all order for a while. Then there was a bit of bit of pushback from autocracy. And now it seems like freedom is a little bit more popular. So let, we'll have a look. See what happens. Okay, the Shoshone is the new like slow sieve. Don't click on anything when the Shoshone are having their go. Who has not picked one? So the Jar are dead. I'm Venice. So the Suma, Czechia, Mercuria, Tang are the only ones left. And Tang is obviously, you know, normal game China. They're the only ones that haven't picked. Everyone else has. The Autocracy Civs suffering some revolutionary waves, but none of them with negative overall happiness. Freedom also going through some revolutionary waves. And Order having some dissidents, but mostly content. But the dissidents ones will be Civs that are next to some big Autocracy or Freedom Nations. Indonesia did go freedom. Uh, the Papal States and Mao have pieced out. There we go. That one's not too confusing because both their logos showed up. And they, uh, Mao also pieced out with the Congo, which is not so big. Um, but there we go. That's the end of that one. Oh, 
all these civs in Africa are getting really strong, and there's just no wars at all. It's ridiculous. Come on. Ethiopia, Burundi, somebody. What are you doing? What are you doing? And the Inca completely Manhattan project. Interesting. Oh, Brazil's starting to make some progress. Okay, I think this is the Inca over here, but maybe I'm wrong. But there we go. I mean, it's a start. It's, I mean, that's, what, that's 70% maybe left. So they could get it done. Wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if they get the job done. Conquer a Sparrow would be a good little pickup for them. And Brazil completes the Pentagon. It is nice to see someone else, you know, have that edge when it comes to getting wonders. Because normally it's just one sieve snowballing and they get all the wonders. But if someone like Brazil gets some stuff, that's useful. Obviously the Great Firewall is quite a big one. That is one that, you know, ideally, I wish it wasn't there. But, you know, when the best sieve in the world gets that, it's normally like, oh, well now no one's got any chance at all, do they? <laughs> What's going to happen? Well, that, that, it kills the fun a little bit. But obviously if, if Brazil gets it... Even if they are in front on technology, they're not not—they're not the dominant sieve in the world, right? I mean, I mean, if they conquer the corral, they will put their name back probably in the hat for number one. But at the moment, France and the Shoshone appear to have that. But there's so many sieves that could contend with them. Korea could get up there again. Mao seems to be on the rise. Um, who else? The Murray seem to be up there. And I mean, I think Texas are going to climb back up there as well. So there's at least sort of seven contenders for the number one spot, in my opinion ideology Czechia went freedom so there we go not too many to go now but another freedom sieve maybe if, if they all went freedom I don't think they'll be providing too much tourism but maybe they could just turn the tide a little bit you know maybe just help them out save some of the other sieves um, we'll see probably not going to happen but there you go we, we can hope there's always a bit of hope um, that it happens We've literally had no wars declared today. This is kind of annoying. Next time we will go back to domination only. But last time we didn't have it. And it was it was really interesting. So it is a bit weird. I think it, sometimes it's because the sieves are pretty equal. You know, a lot of them. And there's no huge discrepancies. I think it's a lot closer than normal. So they're less likely to declare those wars. Potentially. I'm not sure. But yeah, last time it was super interesting without being domination only. So I'm not sure. I think in future it might be interesting to do domination and cultural only because cultural still plays into size. So um, that might be an interesting mix and then just get rid of science and get rid of... I mean, diplomatic isn't winnable anyway, so ho I don't think that's really distracting the AI too much. Like, there's nothing they can do to try get votes, so I assume they're not doing anything. So I don't I don't really know how the other the victory types would stop them being less aggressive. I guess the fact it's not the only way to win, but, you know, re in reality, right? Science victory, I mean, go for it. It doesn't hurt to go for the science victory. You can still do that and be dominant. Sometimes it helps to be a dominant sieve and do that. Domination is on anyway, so if, in theory, maybe maybe they just give up. Maybe they're weak-willed, these AI. They're just like, no, we can't win a domination only. There is 60 sieves on this map. We got no hope. Maybe they've just given up. Cultural victory, again, it's not going to happen. Like, I mean, maybe some of the civs are going for that, but like, I think the most influential nations is like one. <laughs> so I doubt that's happening. And then diplomatic, again, it's impossible. It's not winnable. You can't, you cannot win a diplomatic victory without, in theory, I guess, winning a domination victory. It just doesn't make sense because there's no city states to get any votes from. You need 16 votes. They all have three or four. So it doesn't work like that, I'm afraid. There we go, Tang has gone with freedom. And, oh, yeah, it looks like Mao will kill Mongolia. So there we go, they have just essentially absorbed all of Mongolia into their empire, which certainly is going to put them up the uh, the scoreboard a bit. Like I said, it's similar to Texas. It will take time to reflect in the score and stuff, but it's definitely going to make them stronger. And once some of this stuff is integrated properly, you know, at the moment it's puppets, but if they annex some of those cities... It's going to be really useful. They're going to start to climb the rankings a little bit. Here we go. Texas has broken some of the French Shoshone dominance. I said it. They're, they're coming. They are coming. And there you go. They arrive with the, now the biggest economy in the world, the Texan economy. There you go. And also, France, Korea doing something. I don't know why. Also, we had all the victory types on in the Europe game, and the Civs never sent anything to space, which was quite weird. But Korea has now put the first booster in space. 
for the science victory, which might, you know, get a bit of a, a race going. I don't know, because last time they didn't want to win. I don't know what was going on. I don't know if there was something bugging out, affecting it, but yeah, they... Assyria and Russia could have won for ages. Like, they both had all the spaceship parts, and they just didn't send any of them to space. So I don't know what really goes on there. And there you go. The Harappans complete the Manhattan Project. It's nice. They're not looking too weak, you know. Um, India will need to be careful. They won't be easy. I mean, I, I say that as if we're going to get a war here. Come on. <laughs> There's not been a war in the Middle East since the game begun. There was one between Persia and the Sumer, and that was mainly fought up here in the mountains. So there we go. I'm not going to get my hopes up. And there we go. The People's Republic of China conquers Old Sarai. They've really, really shown up Russia here, haven't they? Russia's really struggling with that one city. And in that same time, the People's Republic of China just took all of Mongolia and can now rebuild, get ready. I mean, the next logical step for them, I mean, if you're brave, you can go after the Huns, but it's got to be this China. Get Beijing. Get Nanjing as well. Then you have a big border with Korea. And at that point, you may even be stronger than Korea. Maybe not tech-wise, but certainly numbers. You could give Korea a good run for their money. Very surprised. Maybe the Mao will show up on here at some point. It's, it, oh, I missed the info addicts. It is so cool being able to have a better look at where civs actually are. But obviously, if we want to have 60 civs, they they don't work. I don't know why. It just doesn't let you turn it on. I guess they... I don't know if the info addicts is probably not set up to do more than 43 or something. I don't know. Arabia has entered the atomic era. Good job. A little bit behind some of the best civs, but, you know, I mean, even the worst civs are fairly good now. You know, Greece is still really far behind. They're just getting riflemen. Um, and there's... See, some of the smaller ones did better initially. So there's some... There's some, like, one-city civs, but they're not as bad. Like, I mean, actually, the U.S. just died, but they were an example, right? They were they were actually keeping up with Texas for technology until they died. So, even... There are some civs around the map with less cities that are still doing okay. Korea sent another space booster. So, maybe Korea is going to try and chase this science victory. Surely, that's going to prompt the other civs to send their spaceship parts up as well. You would think so. But... <laughs> Nothing is guaranteed, of course. Uh, Why is everyone so peaceful? This is really weird. I, I, don't, I don't understand it. It happened at the end of the Europe one as well. But that was like turn 400 and beyond. There was no wars between like turn 4, 400 and 500. Apart from a couple of, you know, minor civs getting eliminated. It was very strange. I don't know why. I don't know what causes it. Maybe the AI just has some tendencies to stop at some point. Rhodesia's in the atomic era. And I think that is, that is actually, I think that might be Burundi. I was going to say the Murray. But I think that's Burundi into the information era. Unless I'm mistaken. Um... Cambarantama. I think that's Burundi. I might be wrong. We'll check now once this turn is finished. Uh, yeah, that is Burundi. So Burundi is in the information era. So that's pretty impressive. Good job for Burundi. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about these civs in southern Africa. I mean, there's just nothing going on at all. It's It's kind of difficult for me to sort of sit here. When there's nothing going on. I always feel bad about it. But um, you guys tend to enjoy this stuff. So it's okay. And there has been some stuff going on I think. But at the moment we are. In terms of wars. I think Brazil is the only conflict. That is actually going on in the whole world. And it's not like that's the most interesting thing to stare at either. I mean they're not making much progress. Korea completes the spaceship booster. Quite a big big achievement there. The Huns. The Mayans. Sweden. Brazil going again. What is this weird line across the screen? Where's that? Oh, it disappeared. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Some weird line down here. It's gone now. Da -da. Come on, give us a war. You know you want to, game. You know you want to. It's going to be a long half an hour if not. This is where streaming um, in some of my Let's Plays has been nice, because obviously I just talk to the chat, 
Here though, it's just me going insane, my own thoughts staring at the AI. Fingers crossed that they do something. Let's have a look at the bigger cities. That's always something we can do when we get a bit bored. Do do thirty eight. Jakarta still leading the way. Thirty three now for Seoul. Then it is Warsaw at thirty two. Delhi now in fourth at thirty one. And Kavanbar of the Muri at thirty. So those are the top five. Novgorod of Russia is in sixth at twenty nine. Honolulu is also at twenty nine. Stockholm twenty eight. Portugal and Lisbon at twenty eight. Rio's at twenty eight. Harappa, Paris. And Bujumbura, Shanghai, Memphis, Krakow, Sacramento, all at 27. 26 for Uxmal of the Mayans, Attila's Court, Abini and Benin, Mabanza, Congo, and Medewakantonwan of the Sioux is at 25, as well as Vijayanagara of India and Jonju in Korea. 24 for Cusco, Gao, Salisbury, Orleans, Varansi, Varanasi, sorry, uh, Busan is also at 24, and then 23 for Belo Horizonte. Corral, Palenque, Poznan, Rome, Tokyo. There we go. And who's got 22? We'll do 22 as well. Machu, San Antonio, Nuremberg, Timoak, Austin, Sigtuna, Vilnius, St. Petersburg, Fortaleza, Bagan, which is in Burma, Boston. So uh, you can stop it if you want to sort of see the countries. I think you should be able to see it. Moscow, Braga, Ur uh, from the Sumer. Oh, this is 21 now. Braga, Ur, uh, Arheimer, Lagos, Lyon. Thebes, Grenada, Rangoon, or I think it's Yangoon, isn't it? But it's spelt with an R. Maybe it is Rangoon, I don't know. And it's spelt with a Y in real life. I don't know, something like that. But Beijing is the final one. There we go, that's the 21. Population and above cities. Arabia has denounced China. Oh, Brazil, you're actually making backwards progress since I've started watching. How's this happened? How are you going backwards? Seriously. What are you doing? Can I have a look at the religions? I think they were actually pretty close last time. I don't know what they're like now. World religions. Is there a dominant one? Uh, fairly. I mean, Protestantism from the Sioux is in 52 cities. It looks like that's in North America mostly. But it might be somewhere else too. You can see some of it in the Inca cities, for example. Then it is a tie for second with Mormonism of Spain at 32. And Zoroastrianism of Persia also at 32. Then a bit behind that is Taoism from China at 25. 19 then for Eastern Orthodoxy of Ethiopia and 18 for Sikhism from Mercuria. That will be Africa's religions. And then Catholicism of the Celsus a bit. Struggling a bit with seven. <laughs> they did try. It's not really taken off. But there we go. It still annoys me the Papal State somehow managed to not get a religion. <laughs> like, I wouldn't have... If you missed out on Catholicism, I mean, that's understandable. Missing out on a religion altogether, it's like, seriously... Is that your one thing? Is that what you're supposed to do? Come on. Can't believe I've reached the point where the games might be too balanced. Like, who would have thought, after all those really unbalanced ones, where I sat there in, like, episode one and would be like, yeah, Mongolia's going to do really well this time, but don't worry, someone else will rival them, and it never happens. Or the Zulu, or the Iroquois. And now we're at a point where, like, yeah, these sieves are all so equal, they're not actually going to fight each other. <laughs> we've really, uh, we've slid too far down the scale. We got too good at it. Maybe that's what it is. I think we have definitely improved at it. I've just found some more mods. You guys keep suggesting some more. I have some more suggestions written down for next time. Although next time is going to be the Asia game. So that will be, I have to go find the really old pad of suggestions. <laughs> from when I first tried to do it. And it didn't happen for some reason. Um, I think I wanted to wait. I think I was going to do it before I got the new PC, but then I just sort of I put the order in, so I was like, okay, I'm not going to start now. Those Songhai units are trying to head home. I don't know. Don't know where they're going, but I don't know where they were going. Sorry, right? we know they're going home by the look of it now, but I don't know where. <laughs> don't know what they were trying to do. The Ottomans actually have a unit that's currently being attacked in the middle of Greece. I mean, that is impressive. I don't know where that's been hiding. <laughs> don't know who's attacking it, but there you go. The Huns complete the Manhattan Project. Sweden completes the Apollo program. No demographic changes? Yes. I mean, uh, who was it? Texas has fallen off for biggest economy again. There's just constant change there. 
and the Murray have taken the lead for the biggest crop yield, which is obviously gaining a lot of seed tiles, I'm guessing, adding some more food that way, maybe farming some of the land they have as well. Some of these sieves have no excuses to be so unaggressive as well, like the Murray should have got rid of Harappa by now, like come on, just do it, and they should be conquering some of these islands off Japan, Indonesia, obviously the same goes for India to be honest, but one of them's got to do it at some point, sure, even Burma could probably do it if they wanted to, go after Indonesia, it would be more diff. actually no, there's no hope, they, don't have, they only have like two boats, not going to happen, but it would be cool to see. Oh, okay, Mao is actually going to try and go after this. I mean, that is bold. I'm not sure it's going to work, but I mean, if you get it, that would be quite nice. I mean, it's not like Persia can get here to defend, right? The mountains are in the way, so why are these units going this way? Just leave this. You don't have to go over here. Just go around north, the north. There's a chance. I mean, they have to be very careful with their plane's health, but it is, it is just about doable. It's not impossible. But I won't... I'm not holding out here for much from Mao. I think he should just be rebuilt. Actually, he's rebuilding a lot of units. I'll give him some credit. Looks like he's starting to look like he is ready to defend from Korea. I mean, these units are still here. These are a completely different batch that have turned up from somewhere. So, yeah, I think they're in a better position now. See, it's hard to tell, but... What can we do? Let's have a look at score. Let's look for some of the standout numbers. So, France is up there, 980. Now, I think they are probably a first place, Ziv. I might be wrong. I think that might be the highest, but again, I could be wrong. Obviously, things like having a religion do help you as well. India's already way up there at 835. I think, yeah, that's pretty good. That's a lot closer to France than I expected, but fair enough. A lot of terrible ones here. Russia at 700. Uh, Korea's also at 950-ish, so similar to France. Boudicca and the Celts, 709. The Huns at 800. Sweden at 826. You can see how close they are, right? Normally someone's got like 3,000, then the couple have got 2,000, and the rest are at like 1,000. Brazil's got 980, which I think puts them first. But no, the Shoshone have 1,009. 850, Portugal. California only 740. That's one of the lower surprises, I guess. Burundi's doing okay, 700. Japan, 600. Uh, Texas, 854. The Su 827. Mao is at 1,070. So, yeah, I don't know what exactly goes into score, but it's not the best system, as you can see. But hey, we've got to use something. Um, apparently, Mao's winning. There we go. Murray with 940. I'm sure you guys won't let me get away with that. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll just use score. Maybe you guys don't need to vote. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah, you guys, you don't know what you're voting for. Come on. Um, just, just rely on the score system. Right, five turns to turn 300, which is quite a big milestone. I said we'd do the results at 350. We probably will. I'll just see how things are going. Obviously, if just nothing happens, we might speed it up. But, yeah, we'll go to 350. Oh, oh, India v. Persia and France v. Persia. Well, France doesn't matter, but India doesn't really matter either. They are, the Harappa's in the way. Oh, we got baited in. <laughs> Our second war of the day, and yeah, nothing. <laughs> the other one was really pointless as well. It was like China v. Persia, or no, sorry, China v. Mongolia, and obviously China's dead now. So, just nothing for us. Some more denouncements. It looks like, yeah, I feel like we've hit the, we're starting to hit that denouncement cycle again. That's fun at least. I don't know what our highlight's going to be today. Normally, I normally when something happens, I try to remember it on the timer that of like the audio on my left, and that's how I find them. Or if not, I just have to rewatch and find another cool moment. But uh, today, there's literally been like nothing. I, I I don't know. I guess Mao conquering Mongolia was pretty cool, but that, that's about it. Nothing else has happened. Japan took out the Khmer, the Khmer, the 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 Khmeri. I don't know. Whatever we're gonna go with. <laughs> So many denouncements coming through right now. It's ridiculous. So unnecessary as well. But whatever. Like, if you're going to denounce someone, at least declare war on them a few turns later. Like, you're, that's the whole point of denouncing people. But no. That, that won't happen. Come on. What world am I living in? Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Venetia cannot even get here. So that sucks. I mean, the song higher here, so like just by coincidence, but there's no way there's enough here 
I mean, this could be interesting. I, I don't know. I've not got my hopes up, but we'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully, you know, at the very least, it might trigger another war. Like, if someone else joins, right? That's maybe the Garamantes. I mean, the Garamantes couldn't do anything here. France just sent a spaceship booster up as well. Yeah, we'll keep our eyes on Carthage. I don't know. It's the Songhai's turn now. We'll see. They do some damage. Um, but yeah, I feel like those units in the Mediterranean are sitting ducks right now. They obviously just couldn't like get open borders to get home. So they were like, right, screw it. We'll just fight. <laughs> we're here anyway. But yeah, I don't see this going too well. There's no one that can even really join and help them. Egypt is probably the only one with a good enough chance in the water. And there's no one on land that can really get to them. Mercuria's got no hope. The Garamantes aren't strong enough. Sweden's obviously not going to attack them because they're really far away. The Papal State may get involved. That's the only other one. Portugal, again, it's kind of too small a gap to squeeze through. Just the one tile. Sea border. So, yeah, I think we might be out of luck in terms of terms of seeing Carthage fall here. Not that I want them to. All, I mean, vice versa, obviously, the Songhai. If the Songhai get weak enough, maybe Benin attacks them. Maybe Nigeria attacks them. But, again, I don't want to... Don't want to get anyone's hopes up. I mean, I have not mentioned Nigeria at all this game. They're just here. They're just doing their own thing. Fair enough. California dropping a ton of denouncements. Who's next? Burundi. They did make some friends as well, so that's nice. It's not all... Not all hatred. There's some friendships. Congo. Oh, my God. None of these wars matter. <laughs> Please. Just give me one that matters. It's all I'm asking for. Just one. Congo versus Mercuria. It does actually matter. Okay, fair enough. They do border each other. I mean, the Congo would add to some messed up border gore, but here we go. We'll see what happens. France does not matter v Mercuria. I did see that. That doesn't matter either. Nigeria and Rhodesia cannot get to Greece. It's not happening. But yeah, the Congo at least can do, do something here. Arabia, Greece, no. Although I'm excited to see Arabia do something. That isn't it. I didn't see who the other one was, but I don't think it mattered. Carthage, Greece. I mean, that's... Okay, Carthage. Yeah, no, that doesn't matter either. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on. Please. Just one war. That's all we need. Just one. I, I mean, ideally more than one, but, you know, I'll, I'll take one at this point. Research agreements, friendships, denouncements. Just nothing. Somehow, someone is attacking the city of Carthage. I'm guessing it's the Songhai, but it's not going to go well. There's the... Uh, yeah, there's no hope. No way. I'm sorry. Not to be a downer or anything. But it's not happening. Brazil has sent up a spaceship booster. Right, come on, Congo. When's your turn? It's not happened yet, it's the Shoshone still. They are one of the in-game civs, not a mod, so they take the priority there. So we should see the Congo go soon. They did a lot of damage in the first turn. I mean, the planes obviously helping them. So they could, you know, make it move a bit forward a bit. I think they probably won't take it this turn. But this could this could easily be a couple of cities for them. And, you know, it would be nice. If someone could start to snowball in Africa, even if it has to be a weird border gourd civ like the Congo, fair enough, I'll happily take that. I just want someone to do something. Because that prompts the other civs to do stuff. Like it, it all normally just sort of goes around. They actually just killed two planes and did worse. But there we go. My hopes my hopes have gone down. Maybe they moved them over here, hopefully. But either way, that did not go well, really. It was not what I was hoping for, particularly, from their turn. Brazil still failing. Not even going to talk about this anymore. How, Russia? How have you not taken this? Come on. It's not that difficult. Please. Get the job done. France with another spaceship booster. So the space race is definitely on now. Uh, India completes the Apollo program. And the Papal State has peaced out with Greece. It's the end of that one.
Is this the moment? Why are you struggling so much? What is going to happen here? Ooh. Okay, no, the Murray fell off, but Texas is winning again for economy. Brazil now has 90% literacy. They didn't even try. I think they're broke. I think a lot of the sieves are broken. I think Indonesia is obviously one. Russia may be another one at this point. I don't know what's going on. It's very messy. The Mayans v the Az... Oh, the Huns got the Hubble Space Telescope, which is pretty big. Uh, okay, there's finally some wars. Mayans v the Aztecs. That is pretty big. And with the help of... Br Brazil's not going to help you. They can't even fight their own war. That, that was a scam you got sold there. Ethiopia and the Zulu have pieced out. Nothing changing hands. Ethiopia versus Phoenicia. Sadly, they just can't get to each other. Same for Benin, I'm afraid. So our hopes have once again been crushed there. <sighs> A few more denouncements coming through. Oh, the Congo did. That was that was so strange. <laughs> they did really well the first turn. They did terrible the second turn, and then boom! Well, that's just like that. It was over. So there we go. They do grab a city. And we should see them maybe get Mercuria's capital. I mean, I'd like them to just keep going, get that, start to make a move, you know, just be strong. I mean, they're one of the best civs down here. Like, come on. Yeah, it might just trigger some others to join in or do some other stuff. Maybe Egypt attacks Mercuria. Who knows? Just something might happen. We can only hope. But here we go. Turn 299. So this is the 300th turn. Quite a big milestone. Albeit with not too much going on at the moment. So hopefully something nice develops we shouldn't be too far from the final sort of regular episode now so um there's only 50 turns to go so i'm thinking that's yeah by the end of this week we should be done regardless of what happens we, we will struggle on through we'll get through it we'll get to 350 and then uh it will be highlights probably for another week and then i will uh move on to the next one which is kind of scary because I'm not exactly I'm not as prepared as I thought I was. I'm gonna have to find some more mods for that. But yeah, that's fine. That's what's happening, I guess. Committed to it now. Oh my goodness! Come on, please. Just one war. Is it too much to ask, Siv? I can manually do it. People have pointed that out to me, and I am aware we can manually do it. I'm not, I'm not going to play God until after the competition part. But if there's something like that, maybe we could pick some after turn 350, where I just force them all to go to war. Could be fun. Morocco v the Iroquois. No, what is that? <laughs> not even near each other. California as well. I mean, it's kind of come on. It's like teasing us, but it's not giving us anything. I don't even know what to say. Like I've, I've run out of commentary. That is one of the issues with these longer episodes. I'm out of things to say. Japan and the Celt... I mean, nope. Nothing. Don't even border each other. Mercuria retakes their city. Not sure if that will be permanently or... If the Congo will make another effort. Come on. <laughs> well, there we go. Turn 300. Doesn't feel like... It feels like it should be an exciting moment, and it just isn't at the moment, I'm afraid. I'm very sorry. But, uh... It's just too weak. Maybe, see, all this time we've been trying to make the games fairer and more balanced, and it looks like that was actually the wrong idea, because now, now there's just nothing happening. <laughs> They're all sort of somewhat equal. I don't know. What else can we look at? What else can be fun to look at? Okay, well, the autosave did not get to 300, so I'm not going to put you through that again. Another 10 turns of nothing. So we'll wrap this one up, um, and I'll come back for turn 300 with the next episode. I think that's just, yeah, that works best for everyone then. And, um, yeah, that makes sense. Also, I'm on a limited time. I've got to do, like, three of these episodes today. So if you think this one has been long and not much is going on, I'm hoping the next one's a bit more interesting for me at least. But yeah, I will be back with the next one. But as always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.